Hi guys, so today I'm going to be reacting to my final assignment grade for my statistics course and also taking a mock exam. I can't wait. Okay, so I have got my laptop. I have been sent an email which has my grade in. Basically the way this works is I complete four assignments over the course of the lead up to exams and this is my final assignment. I will get both a percentage mark for the questions that I got right and then also a grade like A, B, C, D. A is the highest you can get. I'm not sure how far it goes down but I'm presuming you can fail if you do that bad. I've obviously already got my grades back for the first three assignments and I'll share those with you guys later but I haven't actually looked at my grade for my fourth assignment yet so I thought you know what let's just start off the video by reacting to my assignment grade. I'm particularly interested about the mark I get in this assignment because it was the first assignment and only assignment of the four that I actually bothered to type up in Microsoft Word because that's how we have to do the exams, we have to type our answers in Microsoft Word. No I can't use LaTeX, I know everyone thinks I need to use LaTeX, I think I need to use LaTeX but I'm not allowed to. So really I'm kind of looking not only at my grade but also the feedback they give me for the notation I've used in Microsoft Word and whether I've been clear enough. I'm actually a bit nervous to open up my grade, although I shouldn't be nervous because to be fair I did not do this in timed conditions. I did this over the course of a few days when the whole question set is supposed to take like three hours 45 minutes or something like that so I nowhere near did it to time conditions so this grade isn't actually a true reflection of where I'm at I'm probably doing worse than this grade and also I had a glance at the answers for one or two questions I know I shouldn't have to be fair I was really good for the majority of the assignment and for all the other assignments I did not look at the solutions but for this one I caved. You're probably very quickly realising that ah, Paige has just, you know, cheated her way through this assignment, she didn't do it under time conditions, she looked at the answers for one or two questions, but it's just to get a feel of where I'm at and where my understanding's at at this point. It's not a mock exam. My mock exam I'm doing later today and the mark I get for that is going to be a much truer reflection of where I'm at. Also, didn't mention the people who are marking it are ACTED, who are the company who supply all the study materials and run tutorials and stuff like that. I didn't even say what I'm studying. I am studying actuarial statistics. I'm taking the IFOA exams, Institute and Faculty of Actuaries, trying to become a qualified actuary. This is my first exam sitting. Haven't ever taken any IFOA exams before. It's my first time sitting exams to work towards a professional qualification. It's exciting. My exams are in about a month's time and am I going to pass? Who knows? Cool, let's open it up. Oh my god, that's good! I got a grade A. Yes! I think that's a full house. I got an A in every single assignment. I'm chuffed with that. I scored 78%. I don't know what the boundaries are, but I'll take that. 78%. Okay, let's bear in mind that I looked at the answers for one or two questions, so I reckon I can knock off like 5%, maximum 8%. Maybe I'll knock myself down to 70%. I wonder if that's still an A. That might still be an A if the boundary's 70. That's not bad, you know? I'm flitting between panic and yes, I've got this, I'm so motivated. Please go to this marking site to download your marked assignment. I would love to do that. Download your marked script. Okay, so here is my feedback. This is an assignment that clearly demonstrates you have good knowledge and understanding of most of the topics covered in this part of the course. Well done. I would recommend you revisit the notes concerning generalized linear models, especially the exponential family, model fitting, and comparison and the saturated model. Okay, the fact that I'm getting confused with even those words there means I definitely need to revisit the chapter. You also lost several marks through poor exam technique. All right, <laughs> that hurts my feelings. Always read the question carefully and at least twice to make sure that you fully understood what's being asked and that you can answer all that is required. Oh no, I hate it when I don't read the question properly. That is the worst way to lose marks without a doubt. Regarding the time taken, oh yeah, so I put in a note saying I literally spent hours on this assignment, typing it all up was painful, and they said you could save some time by not rewriting information given in the question. It helps me get my head in gear with the question if I write out, like rewrite out the key bits of info in the question, but also it takes time and when I'm actually typing the questions it's not so easy to do that. 
So they are right, I should stop doing that. You could save a significant amount of time by not trying to produce perfect notation in your answers. Overall, your work was of a good standard, clearly and logically presented. Keep up the good work. Okay, I've made it absorbed by the constant. Final answers should be given to at least four significant figures. That seems overkill. Oh, yeah, no, they were right. I should have done that. I should have done that. Okay, looking through the feedback is making me stressed. Even though I know I've got 78% of the marks, everywhere I've lost marks, I'm like, oh my god, why is that? That's my final assignment done. Good news. Next thing I need to do is my mock exam. This is like a more formal mock exam. And also I think they share my mock exam results with my company. So... I so hope my line manager isn't going to be too disappointed in me. I was going to prepare more for the mock exam and then take it. But I've just thought to myself, no, I just need to plunge into it and get going on past papers. I was supposed to do my mock exam earlier this week, but I've had a bit of a mare with client work. I had to write a report and it was a very long report. It was my first time writing a report of its kind, so it's been quite a struggle and it spent some quite long hours over the last few days and I had to cancel my mock exam day and shift it until next week, but also I want to get the mock exam done sooner rather than later, so I'm doing my mock exam today and I'm just going to take my mock exam day as a study day next week. I definitely do need to get this mock exam done. It's actually a two-parter and I'm only going to do the first part today because the second part is in R. I wish I could say I was an R expert at this point, but I'm just not yet. I, I Again, I need to practice more exam style questions using R. Am I worried? Yeah, it's kind of hit me now that studying alongside a full-time job is quite a lot of work, even with the study leave they give us. Right, with that, I'm going to go set myself up, get myself the IFOA suggested Microsoft Word notation sheet to use as a cheat sheet. I'm going to kind of lay out all my notes because the exams are open book and probably get up the digital notes as well so I can search through it quickly if I need to find something. Oh, I told you I was going to go through my other assignment grades, didn't I? I forgot. I did the best in assignment one. I got 90%, but that's expected because assignment one was the most basic stuff of the course. It was the start of the course. Assignment two was my weakest. I got 73. Assignment three, I got 77. And assignment four, I got 78. Just jumping in here with a brief interlude to deliver a very important message. The census 2021 is here. This is a really important survey that gives us a picture of all the households and people in England and Wales, and it happens once every 10 years. It's really, really important that all students in England and Wales, including international students, complete this census. And that's because the information provided by students will help inform funding decisions that affect the student community and the overall university experience. For example, information supplied by students now is going to help in predicting educational requirements in the future. How many places do schools need? How many places do universities need? Also transport links. The census can help identify areas with particularly poor transport links and we'll also be looking at where students live in relation to campus. They'll be looking at where university bus links are needed or need improving. And that's just to name a few areas that the census will impact the student community. It only takes 10 minutes to complete so you need to get on it and this is how you can do it. Log on to the census website and get a code texted to you. You can then use this code that's been texted to you to fill out the census. And from there, just follow the instructions on the census website and make sure you do it for your university address. Just to be clear, students need to be included in a census form for both their home address and their term time address. So yeah, I've completed the census. You should go fill it out too. I'll leave a link in the description. It's census.gov.uk. Go fill it out. Okay, I'm upstairs now and I'm about to set up for my exam. But I've just remembered I received this package the other day and I think... It is study materials. It could even be a paper version of the mock exam. Oh no. It's basically more papers with work solutions. And they're essentially mocks that I'm gonna do for myself, but they're not the official mock. I think I actually probably already have the official mock somewhere in my other box of study materials.
Okay, so I finished the mock. I did it in three hours and 15 minutes. I was good and stuck to time. I typed it in Word. I did everything that I'd be expected to do in the actual exam. I've just counted through and I've only answered like three quarters of the questions. So that's 25% gone already because I haven't even answered the questions. Um, and am I confident that I've got everything I've answered 100% correct? No, so I'm not sure I'm feeling too hopeful for the mark I get back for this walk. But it is the first paper I have done under exam conditions, so you know, I'm gonna go easy on myself. When I started the mock, I started to panic because I felt like I couldn't answer anything and I was like skipping over questions, trying to find something I could answer and I felt like I couldn't answer anything. Then I relaxed a bit more. I did take my time a bit. I had to look at the notes a bit because I'd forgotten parts of the course and that definitely slowed me down. I feel like it's doable to get me to a point where I can pass in a month's time. I don't need to be able to pass right now because the exam's in a month. Oh. It's virtual coffee break time with my uni friends. So I think I'm gonna round up this video here. I don't have much more to say. All I'm gonna do is submit this mock for marking now. Honestly, the mock has just reminded me that if I don't do the question practice, I won't pass the exam. I cannot expect to do well in this exam if I don't put the time in and practice questions. Thanks for watching guys. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel, follow my Instagram, and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.